Hi, I'm Mike Graham, and this is Lighting Insights. Today, we're going to be talking about something that's pretty basic, but still extremely important. We're going to be talking about learning the ropes. One of the coolest aspects of theatrical technology is ropes. But people think, it's just rope, it's just a knot, what's the big deal? The reality is, in order to keep yourself safe in a show situation, it's important to choose the right rope and the right knots, depending on your situation. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some different ropes and some different knot styles. On top of that, how to take care of your ropes so they don't fail you in your next show. The first type of rope we're going to talk about is trick line. It's just a common black diamond braid line that we see all the time in theater or on tour or wherever you're doing your show. Usually use this, this type of rope for tying up your cables or tying a cable to a piece of trussing or a pipe. It's a lightweight, really inexpensive way to get your stuff off the ground. Keep in mind that with this type of rope, it's not super strong, it's not designed for carrying a lot of weight, so don't try flying yourself with something like this. You're going to want to try to use something completely different than this style of rope. Another style of rope that's commonly used in theater and rigging, even in mountain climbing, is diamond braid polypropylene line. This is very commonly used for everything from hanging up heavier cables, tying things to the rig, even safety of life stuff when you have a bigger diameter than this, obviously. One of the advantages of polypropylene line like this is that it goes through pulleys really easily because it's designed to slip nice and easily. Another advantage of polypropylene line is that it's plastic and nylon wrapped together. Because of that, it will not degrade in nature. You can use this stuff outdoors, indoors, it doesn't really matter. Another advantage is that because it is plastic, when you cut it and it does fray, you can whip the ends of the line with a lighter, just heat it up and just pull it through until you get a nice hard edge. One of the disadvantages of this style of line is you can't braid it which means you can't decide that you want to make a loop just by opening up the spline and dropping line in there. That's not going to work. But this line is super versatile and very commonly used. And the last style of rope we're going to be talking about today is three strand twisted. This is a common line that you see in theater. When you think about rope, this is what you usually think about. Three strands of line twisted together, super simple, been using it for centuries. There are two basic styles that we use in today's world. There's the plastic style, which is either nylon or polypropylene, and then there's natural fabric, which is usually hemp or manila, depending on your situation. The plastic style is great for outdoor situations. It's designed to be used in environments where it's gonna rain all the time, or be wet or damp, because this line is never gonna rot. The natural fibers have a much higher tendency to rot over time because they are natural fibers, it's what they do. Most theaters use this style of rope because it's not that expensive, it's very, very high strength, extremely durable, and it doesn't stretch over time. When the show's over at the end of the day, putting away all your equipment in the right way is really important. Ropes are no different. You need to take as much care for your rope as you do for your most expensive fixtures. Rolling a rope over your elbow is completely unacceptable. This should never be done, and nothing makes you look like a new guy more than rope, rolling up a rope in this fashion. It twists, the, it twists up the rope, it makes it unusable, it makes it harder to coil, and it won't last as long. Just don't do it. Rather, what you do want to do, make sure all the kinks are out, and the rope is fully relaxed. Grab one end, and just simply roll it up. All your loops will be about the same size, and when you pack it away, it's nice and neat and ready to go next time. When you cut rope, it's really important to know how to treat it after it's been cut. Ropes fray almost instantly as soon as you cut them. Knowing how to fix that problem is really important. With natural fiber ropes, you need to use a system called whipping. What a whip is, is on the end of the rope, you just create a, you create a special knot designed to hold the ends of the ropes together. Let's see how you do that. Okay, so we have a section of freshly cut rope. We need to whip the end so it doesn't fray any further. What you do is you use a small piece of twine. About, this is a little long, but it'll work for our purposes. 
create a loop on the top. So you have your loop up top like that. And then start bringing your long line over top and keeping, making sure to keep everything nice and tight and spin it down the rope. I usually go for about 10 wraps because it gives me enough, enough, spot, enough place to bury my knot below. When you get down far enough, take the end of your line, keeping your loop up top like this. Pass your line through. Then you pull the bottom line, which makes your loop. Tie it underneath, and your line is whipped. When you cut diamond braid polypropylene line, it's a bit of a different process than with the natural fiber lines. The easiest way to do it is just grab a lighter. You have your frayed end here. Heat it up a little bit, let it burn down. Then you just kind of drag your fingers over it. It's had enough time to cool off, it won't burn your fingers, and it'll just create a nice solid end to your line. As far as knots go, there's a few that are important to know. So we're gonna start out with some basic ones and then get into some more complex ones. We're gonna start out with the standard square knot. The square knot is a great, just low pressure, easy to use, common knot. It's not great for high stress situations, so you don't wanna hang anything really heavy off of it, but for just tying a data cable to a pipe, this is perfect. Start out by crossing your line, turn it over one time, Bring it back through, and there you go. You can tell it's a square knot because it just it slides nice and easy. If it doesn't slide like this, it's a granny knot and you gotta tie it over again. One knot that everyone should know is a bowling knot. Bowling knots are super useful for everything from pulling a fixture up, of, up a ladder to pulling a person off of a ledge. Bowling knots are super common and it's very easy to tie, and this is how you do it. I learned how to tie a bowling knot by watching Roy Schreider and Jaws sitting on the back of a boat learning how to tie this knot before the shark shows up. Basically, it works like this. Bring a line into a loop so you have a line coming out from underneath. And the story goes, the rabbit comes up out of the hole, goes around the tree, and goes back down the hole. Tie tight, and you got a nice knot. What makes this knot super useful is no matter how hard you pull this line, it will not slip back so it doesn't crush the person that's trying to hold up. The next knot we're going to talk about is not actually a knot at all. It's a hitch. It's called a clove hitch. Clove hitches are pretty common in theater. They're used for just about everything where you need to tie a line and have a dead weight coming off the bottom of a pipe. It goes like this. Over cross, so you have a cross coming across your bottom line, and you want to make sure you have enough slack so that you can cross your dead line back underneath. Make sure it's nice and tight. If you want to be a little bit safer, you can do a half hitch on the bottom, bring the rope back up through, clove hitch. Another common hitch is a double half hitch. A lot of times you'll see a double half hitch used in conjunction with another knot as a safety knot. In our situation here, we're gonna show a double half hitch on its own. It goes like this. Make sure you have enough lead coming off of the other side of your pipe. You're gonna come up and through. You're gonna come down, bring your line on the back side of your rope and up. And as you tighten it, make sure and kind of cinch it coming through. And there's your half hitch. So let's say you're in a situation in a theater where you need a little bit more rope than you have. You have two ropes, but they're not quite long enough. Splice them together, no problem. 
we have a knot called the fisherman knot. Oddly enough, fishermen never use this, but in our industry we use it quite a bit. One thing to keep in mind with a fisherman's knot, this knot is not designed for life safety issues. If you're ever having to fly somebody or pull somebody out of a situation, you never want to use this knot because this knot could pull through, it could fail. This knot is designed for situations where it's not life critical. So please keep that in mind when using this knot. To tie a fisherman's knot, you get your two lines parallel, take your first line, build a loop, come back around twice, So there's one side, then you take your other side and do the same thing. Build your loop, come back around one more time, make it tight, take your two lines, cinch them together, fisherman's line. The whole point of this episode was to make sure you picked up a few knots to keep yourself out of trouble. Remember when you're on site, the whole point is not to tie a lot, but to tie it right. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Mike Graham, and this has been Lighting Insights.